and then the devil is sitting in the back of a limo. Oh, sorry, we couldn't afford a, a limo. He's sitting in the back of a sedan. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sensible town car. Not quite. He tries to do the slow, evil window roll down thing, but it's too fast, so he's like, oh, um, hi, I'm the devil. Also, it's got the it's got the child safety window, so it only rolls like halfway down. <laughs> so he's trying to do the whole thing. He's over sticking half his the face out like a dog <laughs> trying to sniff while they're driving by. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because they refuse to stop making them. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who's getting divorced? <laughs> <laughs> no, David A.R. White <laughs> is getting divorced. <laughs> the religious hypocrite who founded Pure Flix, which... I'm sure is now canceled by all the good Christians. He's getting divorced. <laughs> oh, wait, like uh, wait, wait, that's going to make three quarters of his filmography. You know, the movies about how divorce is evil and you should never, never do that. And only satanic people do that. Very awkward in the future. So <laughs> we're going to move a few of those up in the in the list here. <laughs> also, we watched this on Pure Flix, this movie we're about to review. So I don't know. I feel like we should just end the episode as a boycott yeah, right, right now. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> Oh, well, no, not yet, because oh. I have to introduce this other guy. Otherwise, nobody will know who else was laughing. Uh, that's uh, my bad friend. He's 900 miles to my northeast, and he is Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm real married, Noah. Thanks for asking. <laughs> real. <laughs> Man, it's crazy how I don't have any Jesus, but I'm still married. Yeah, no, happily myself as well. Yeah. You a good person? I actually almost <laughs> felt bad about this when we got the news. I was like, ah, maybe we shouldn't mention it. And then in the news article that told us he was getting divorced, it was like from the producer of God's Not Dead and Unplanned. And I was like, oh, right. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Fuck that guy forever. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So, but unfortunately, our today's movie has nothing to do with him. Although that would, oh, would be so fucking great. We're going to tie it in. We're going to make we'll, it. We'll work. find Trust a way. Me. We'll find a way. It's on Pure Flix. But, well, there you go. So tell us, Heath, what was on Pure Flix? What are we going to be breaking down today? <laughs> we watched Adam's Testament. It's the story of Satan, the Prince of Darkness, going down to Georgia looking for a soul to steal. <laughs> but he finds the world's least talented musician possible. <laughs> and also Satan is just super bad at guitar too. So the whole plan ends up being a big struggle. You remember that Will Ferrell sketch with like Garth Brooks? He's trying to write a song before he gets famous sitting on his couch and then the devil shows up. It's Will Ferrell and he's like, I'll make you a star. Slake thine thirst on the music that can boil oceans. And then he's like, <laughs> There's a guy named Fred, and he's got a pair of slacks. Yeah, <laughs> I have Fred's not got, seen Okay, okay the guitar's out of tune. That wasn't my fault. <laughs> Fred's got slacks as a winner. They literally made that sketch into a movie by accident, and I couldn't stop laughing at it. So yeah, this this is very much if the devil went down to Georgia, had just ended with, oh, I dropped it. I, oh, that was my damn <laughs> right. <laughs> Aww. I'm doing a, se a C7. Wait, C7. Seven, seven, ping, seven, ping, seven, ping. Seven. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the gritty modern cowboy stories of late 2010s television, but the only place you have to shoot is your Catholic church, its graveyard, and the alley next to your Italian restaurant, <laughs> you will love this movie. It's a not at all true detective. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So it, let, let, I want to give the audience the same warning about how bad the writing was going to be in this piece of shit movie that Pure Flix gave us. Here is the description of the film verbatim. Adam, a young musician, had the perfect life. I have no idea what part of Did the he? movie they're talking about there, <laughs> right? Until one day, everything changed. Also, I have no idea what day that would be. <laughs> His father continues on a relentless path to save Adam's soul as angels and demons are disguised as humans. <laughs> also, we have fun costumes <laughs> in our movie. Also, there's outfits. There's lovely little outfits. <laughs> 
And it concludes, this ancient spiritual war between good and evil will test their faith. Good job writing the movie summary, Grandpa. Let's get you back to the Alzheimer's ward, huh? Oh, Jesus Christ. You'll connect those thoughts one of these days. So uh, other than summary, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best? Best, the worst? worst understanding of what guitars are <laughs> and, and, bugles and bugles are, yes. like physically. <laughs> also yeah. singing. But yeah. Yeah. And sing. Like physically, they don't know how noises happen on instruments <laughs> or in sing. Like we'll get to the details. Like Honestly, I'm surprised the singer wasn't like fingering frets on his chest to make different <laughs> notes happen on his singing. <laughs> So dumb. Well, them not understanding noise would explain a lot about how the goddamn movie was miked too. So, oh my god, literally. <laughs> I so little. Let me part the kimono here. I wrote at the top of our notes because I usually go through the movie first. That's just the sound of the movie. It doesn't matter if you watch it on YouTube or Pure Flix or Amazon. That's what the movie sounds like. Oh, it's so bad. But if you want to sign up for a lifetime membership and support <laughs> Andrea Logan Mike's half of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't know if we can sign up for that. He's not great with lifetime commitments, but uh, <laughs> all right. But I was going to go with best worst vanishing plot points. OK, so it's like this plot felt the need to juke now and again. They'll introduce <laughs> this crazy shit that would be the plot of any other movie that just disappears in the mist. Oh, he murdered that guy. Wait, oh, how, <laughs> hold, where are we going? He just <laughs> he murdered that guy back there in that last scene. Why are we moving on? Murdered that yeah, guy. Anyway. Exactly. Anyway is the plot summary of yep. this movie. <laughs> Wait, what happened with the I said anyway? <laughs> and in a related note, I was gonna go with best worst moral high ground. So as Noah already mentioned, this movie is the story of a murderer's quest to make his son be more Christian. Yep. Yeah, unrepentant murderer as far yeah. as we know. And yeah, throughout so, the film, yeah, pretty solid murder. We'll <laughs> I'm team murderer. I, it's one of my favorite. I might have just gone with best worst murder. Oh, it's it's one of the best worst murders for sure. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We have way more plot points than plot to get to, so we're going to take a quick break to warm up, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the alternating whispers and shouts that are. Adam's Testament. Adam's Testament. <laughs> okay. Little of this and some garbage can cleaner. And um, that should do what, it. Hey, Eli, um, what, what are you doing with all that science stuff? This looks dangerous. Oh, vi I, I am making my own finisteride for my hair loss. Out of stuff you, you found around the house? Mm -hmm. Yep, stuff around the house. I don't think you can do that. I don't think that's a good idea at all. <laughs> I mean, what else am I going to do, Heath? Go to the doctor? I mean, why don't you just try forhims.com? What's forhims.com? Oh, it's a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. It's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have hair. So wait, you're telling me I don't have to make my own finisteride? You do not, and you can't. <laughs> for hims connects you to licensed medical professionals online, which could save you hours, completely confidential and discreet. Answer a few questions, a medical professional will review, and if they determine it's right for you, they'll prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that's shipped directly to your door. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to forhims.com slash gam. That's forhims.com slash gam. Full refund of price paid available for the first 90 days supply. Refund requests must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhimscom slash gam. Hey, thanks, Heath. So who told you that you could make your own finasteride anyway? Oh, uh, it was the My Pillow guy? Yep. Okay, that tracks. Hey, I hereby call the first writer's meeting for Adam's Testament in order. Hey. Hey. All right. All right. So uh, here's what I'm thinking. It's about this cop, right? But he's also a gangster. Ha. <laughs> Is there any other kind? Yeah, bada bing. I work in insurance. Oh. Right, right, right. But his son, 
His son has gone to the devil. May he rest in peace. Who yeah, will be played by my uncle Eugene? Oh, ah, nice. He was so good in Oklahoma. He did the tap dancing. Yes, he was yeah. very good. So he's got to like stop the devil with angels and laser magic. So his mm -hmm. son stops playing rock music and dating girls who don't text back their ma. Real shame. <sighs> who Real doesn't shame. text back their ma? You got to text her back. That's ridiculous. You got to text her back. Okay. Uh, so what are we looking at uh, budget wise? All right. Uh, well, we can use the alley next door. Great, uh, great. Father Biamichi said we can use his church. Love the father. Right. And uh, we have $500,000 worth of eye color changing CGI. All right. So um, we just change everyone's eyes and uh, yell at each other in alleys. That's the plan. Bada bing. Hey. Hey. And we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to open up with Mark 836. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And Bible quote that pretty much relates to nothing in the movie, check. I <laughs> love that quote so much. They try so hard for these every time in these movies. Like they go through the entire Bible for whatever, something that relates to their thing. But it's always like God is life. Yeah. Hats. Right. Oh, well, this one sounds like your buddy trying to cheer you up when you're Ex-girlfriend clearly traded up. Uh, yeah. How about that? Can... <laughs> yeah. Those grapes are probably sour anyway. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> the Bible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So we start off on this bald guy sitting in his car drinking. Oh, our protagonist, Chemo Vin Diesel. <laughs> you, know, you know how they did a gritty Joker reboot? This looks like they did a gritty Vulture reboot. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Just having a drink in his parked car. You guys are being kind of judgy about this. Like, <laughs> right before you go to the bar to have a drink, you got yeah, exactly, a park drink. exactly. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sorry to make fun of bald alcoholics that early in the story. <laughs> right away. Um. So yeah. So they go into. So he goes into this club called Purgatory. Huh. Mm hmm. Interesting. And it's it's a real. It's a real strange club. There there appears to be a a wedding going on. They also have a. A Jewish fiddler? This club is like a Stefan skit. What? Okay. Uh, why is the fiddler Jewish is my first question for you. Well, he's wearing a talus. He's wearing the talus. What is that? I. How the hell did I miss that? Jewish? Yeah. It, so, I mean, to be fair, you were probably distracted by the senior citizen in a wedding dress. Yeah. On the left side uh -huh. of the, that was, the mise en scene was busy. Yeah, but on the, crazy on, the, <laughs> on the right side, we had a guy who was like warming up for his audition for Tevya. <laughs> yeah. I also really want to know, because we're going to learn this is like Satan's Club. I want to know how Satan came up with that name. Right? Minions, gather around me. Yes, Lord Satan. We need a, a base of operations for our plan to corrupt the soul of those two guys I don't like. So I'm thinking we make a nightclub. A den of sin. Perfect, Lucifer. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of those really down and dirty places with um, a bar mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. other sinful stuff. Uh, other, other sinful stuff, exactly. Perfect. Right, and so we call it Purgatory. Mm. Really? Yeah, you know, Purgatory, wink. Uh, All right, well, I mean, shouldn't... Shouldn't it be called, like, hell? Yeah. What? Oh, what's the matter with you? That would give it away. Wait, but but calling it purgatory wouldn't? That's that's very sad. No, yeah. it won't, because people will be like, hey, is that club run by the devil? Oh, wait, it can't be, because it's called purgatory. And, Why? and everyone and then, knows that Satan runs hell. But, and purgatory is run by... Medium Jeff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Purgatory's run by Medium Jeff. Oh. oh. Heard it. Wait, what's he okay. like? Eh? Oh, that tracks. Yeah, it makes sense. He's meh. All right, so the bald guy goes into the bar, and he asks the bartender, he's got this little picture, and he's like, hey, have you seen this guy? Now, it's, it's the lead singer of the band that literally just walked off the goddamn stage. <laughs> <laughs> but, still, but the guy's still like, let me think about it. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, wait here. I'll, I'll be back with whether or not I've seen someone. <laughs> you need to go. Can you just answer now? What? Ch uh, check with my manager. Yes, I saw him. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Exactly. Okay, uh, you know what? Bring out the manager. You're being a dick right now. <laughs> yes. 
So, yeah, so the bartender comes back and he's like, yeah, hey, man, he's in the back. So bald guy goes to the back and he finds our protagonist, Adam, and kind of Adam tries to run and then he half tackles him sort of like he's <laughs> under arrest, I guess. It's like a flag football tackle, if you will. <laughs> yeah. OK, where was he trying to run, though? Because they were in the back room and he like just gets up from his chair and like yeah, he's not runs running towards one his step door. to the wall. <laughs> he can't see me when I move. And the cop guy's like, gotcha. <laughs> Shit. Ah, I forgot to paint a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So they're like, oh, you got me. And then we get the credits because we can consider ourselves the fuck teased. Oh, yeah. Someone requested True Detective credits. <laughs> yes. And, and and by True Detective credits, we mean slow motion and old faces. Yep. Yeah. Slow motion That's and it. old faces. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a uh, Hungarian bordello band. Music. <laughs> Rocks pretty hard. It was fun. It's like Sam Spade figuring out the Bible code. Right. Yeah, it, was, it was dark and gritty. Uh, this is also where we see, and I thought this was maybe just microphone neck tattoo. Yes! <laughs> is that what you were going to say? Yes, I was. And it's all I'm ever going to say afterwards. <laughs> oh. I was blown away by, okay. So during the credits, yes, there's a bunch of fucking true detective ripoff shit going on, but there's also a character with a goddamn giant old timey, like, you know, big band era microphone tattooed on his goddamn neck. And the fact that we were talking about anything else just weirded me the fuck out. Oh. <laughs> he might as well have a gramophone tattoo going up onto his face, too. Oh. Like it's way too much. All right. So, yeah, so we see microphone tattoo. We all pause the movie for a long time and stare at microphone <laughs> tattoo. We write microphone tattoo in various fonts and <laughs> sizes in our notes. I tried to touch it for a while <laughs> yeah. on the screen. I, I pawed it slowly with my fingers for a good 10 minutes on pause. Yeah, I have a seven notebook full of microphone tattoo. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All work and no microphone tattoo makes Noah a dull boy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, the, so then we cut, we end the credits. We cut back to bald guy. He's putting Adam in his car. Now, we feel like he's a cop arresting this guy, but he's not because it's not a cop car. Apparently, it's he is a father citizens arresting his son for breaking <laughs> the Bible law. Yeah, and he tells us this. He goes, technically, you haven't broken the law, but you violated the Bible. And I wrote in my notes, so I'm Bible arresting you? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So they're sitting in the car together and, and they have this argument, this front seat to back seat argument. And I noticed, Eli, that you have the exact same note I did on this line <laughs> where yeah, dad goes, says, try spending one day in my shoes. <laughs> and we both wrote, are they going to Freaky Friday? <laughs> oh, I hope they Freaky Friday. <laughs> Please Freaky Friday. So, but no, they don't. It was still early in the movie. That could have been the plot as be like, yo, now you have to be the drunken cop and I have to. And that could have been hilarious. The See? dad trying to sing at the. Oh, that dad was guaranteed to be a better musician than that son. That's <laughs> true, actually. Yeah. Now that, now that you mention it. All right. So, yeah. So he's like, um, so they start arguing and they get out of the car. At one point, the son's like, your Bible is a lie, which the dad responds to with physical violence. He's like, yeah, you know, you can talk shit about me, but don't you talk shit about the word of God, right? <laughs> yeah, just to establish himself as the protagonist here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. By the way, they thought we weren't going to notice this move from being in front of the club to in front in some like uh, trailer park because they had to yell loud and they weren't allowed yeah. to do that near those apartments. <laughs> so... I saw guys. I noticed. Mm. So anyway, so the kid runs off. Dad's sitting there feeling sorry for himself in the car when suddenly a gentleman shows up to tap dance on his hood. Oh, I was so hoping it was one of those roving gangs of tap dancers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. It was, yeah. <laughs> Technically. Yeah, so this guy starts tap dancing on his hood and then does a backflip off his car. I wrote my notes. I'm like, man, this movie has backflip money? No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the miking, I did not think that would be the case. No. But yeah, so this is the devil, right? The devil has now shown up to tell the bald character what a bad... That, his name is Joseph, by the way. They they eventually get around in the second act at some point in naming <laughs> him. But the devil's here to tell Joseph what a terrible father he is. And it's 
I want to talk about this guy's performance because it's like it's like he saw Al Pacino in The Devil's Advocate and was like, too subtle. Yep. Too subtle. Yeah. Not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is the closest thing to a real actor they have. This is uh, Nick Mancuso. You, you, he's got one of those like he's the guy from the thing faces. Ah, uh, yeah. But this was like he felt like okay, I'm obviously the best actor in this movie. I have to fucking go for it, and he did. <laughs> There's in no every scenery. Goddamn second. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no scenery, but I will chew it anyway. <laughs> There's also this great moment where as he's parting, he says to Joseph, this is the neutral zone, my domain. And I just was like, well, I'm pretty sure hell is your domain. And a neutral, neutral zone, zone would be nobody's right there domain. In the, right <laughs> right there the in name. The name. Baked it into the title. All right. And so then we were introduced to the unreliable narrator of this film, which is the title cards, right? Because it's like 10 years. The title cards is 10 years ago. But. But we just kind of flash back and forth between modern day and 10 years ago, right? Like 10 years ago, there was a flashback. What the fuck are you talking about, right? So we cut to 10 years ago, though, back when dad had a, <laughs> a hair piece. Oh, <laughs> I want to talk about this toupee so bad. Was that a toupee? <laughs> I think it was a bald cap for the rest of the movie. I'm not, I think that's his real hair. <laughs> It looks like a Beatles costume that doesn't rise to the level of Halloween Adventure. Like oh. Halloween Adventure passed on that particular wig. Oh my God. It just, it doesn't turn when his head does it. Everything that <laughs> could possibly be wrong with it is wrong with it. It's amazing. But we cut to him back when he had hair and his son was clean cut and didn't have a neck tattoo or a goatee. And we see his, the the wife, the uh, who is, of course, gonna die we know because she basically walks through this scene saying i promise not to die today in an atheist making car crash right <laughs> okay right. now it seems like you know somehow you know you're gonna die later <laughs> all right well it's, this is a 10 years ago but look at how glowy and white these walls are obviously i'm about to <laughs> die <laughs> so. That's a good point sorry they're doing this thing right where she comes in she's like it's time to wake up honey i made your pancakes except they didn't get a child. So I just no. was like, oh, it's nice that they incorporated the beginning of this stepmom porn into their Christian <laughs> film. You know, <laughs> two birds, one stone and all that. Right. Yeah. But then we cut to the modern day where we have our, our character, Adam. He's in the middle of making out with his like evil satan -y girlfriend. But he has to stop <laughs> to talk about how much he hates God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing like smack talking God to turn on the ladies. Am I right? <laughs> By the way, at this point in the movie, the sound design was so irregular. I was twiddling the volume on my laptop like I was trying to contact aliens. It was fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I asked for help in Morse. <laughs> and. This girlfriend character, by the way, is so unhappy about everything that's happening like in her life as an actress more than anything else. But in the movie, she's just like, hey, can you stop whispering evil poetry? You're right next to my face. Just, ah, uh, what's happening? And he's like, you want to know the funniest part about how stupid fucking stupid fucking God is? Fucking God stupid? And she's like, no. Right. Like, All right. Yeah. I had a speech ready. If I Whatever. may quote... Daniel Dennett, you may not. Please don't. No. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we cut back to the the Joseph, the bald dad. And this movie is so lazily written. They don't have any way to establish that he's an alcoholic other than to have him consuming alcohol in literally every scene. <laughs> right. So he's, he's like in the bathroom pouring himself some wine as he sits on the shitter. You know, like just ridiculous amounts. That's of not a... Just an, an alcoholic thing. Is it? That's just a that's just a nice poo scotch. I mean, what are you gonna do while you're shit? That's like a forty five <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and this is a lovely home, and they try to make it dark and gritty by putting out a colander of oranges in the sink. You know, <laughs> like a real badass. <laughs> also, just you know, pro tip: um, turn on the light for your brooding solo <laughs> drinking sessions kind of brightens oh, it up. And now I wanted him to just hit his shins throughout this entire montage. <laughs> oh, fucking. Why haven't I turned on the lights? So many stools. <laughs> fucking Legos. God damn it, Adam. <laughs> yeah. I wanted his wife to show up and like turn the light on and like fuck up his whole brooding thing. Like, 
Start playing dance music or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so he, but he walks around in his house in the dark, like, picking shit up, going, like, I wonder if this photograph has any exposition in it. He'll shake it a little <laughs> bit, yeah. But we eventually do get the full-blown flashback to her dropping in her papers in the streets just as drunk driver was coming by, driving drunkly. Oh, and let me just say, because I, I love the little touches of insanity that make it into these Christian films. This particular drunk driver, and we've seen a lot of them, He's drunk driving while listening to funk, which I well, <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to fucking hear. He gets some kind of funk going on, but not right away. First, first we see him like fighting with his wife or girlfriend or whatever mm -hmm. as he's leaving, and he's like, "I'm drunk and abusive, bye bye," <laughs> and it kind of fucked up the tone of like. The character to say you can't say bye bye abusively yeah really mm -hmm. so he's just like ah oh, toodles fuck one by i don't know all right <laughs> Ta -ta for i'm now. evil drunk guy and then he gets in his car and he starts bumping some like ace of bass yeah. and i was like all right it's not it's, the right it's why they cut see a later alligator from blue velvet not a lot of people know that <laughs> so and so He's driving drunkly and angrily and, and, and not giving a shit about Jesus Christ and his relationship with his Lord and Savior. Meanwhile, the mom spills her papers all over the street and must walk out into the middle of the street and look only at them. Right. <laughs> OK. And again, just another little touch here that I really loved. They didn't give her enough papers for the space yes. work. Yes. She has three pieces of paper. <laughs> so she's like, oh, man, I'm oh, I'm done. I am done. Now would right. be the time. Uh, I better collate these in the street now. <laughs> but then she finds a pamphlet, right? This pamphlet sitting on the ground saying, like, are you ready to meet your maker? And then she just stands there and stupidly stares at it, which means that at least to some degree, that chick track killed her. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the, she op the Jesus pamphlet falls open after she's been hit. No, seriously, look to the left. <laughs> God's just up in heaven. Ah, should have put it on the front. Should have put it on the front. That's yeah, me. that was God's fault. Very clearly, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he killed that lady. God literally distracted her with a message that says, like, I want to meet you. So I guess I, I'm going to kill you um, <laughs> read this now in the road and you're dead yeah and okay so sometime later dad's there right dad is responding to this dad is a cop sometimes in some of the flashbacks Something, i don't yeah. know but he's there and and then adam the son just drives by and thinks hey i wonder who the dead person under that sheet is but it's his <laughs> mom so he freaks out right <laughs> oh and again Tiny moment. But oh, the God, actor, this is so good. Yes, please. The actor playing the EMT doesn't know what to do. So he starts tucking the dead body in. <laughs> yes. He's just like, hey, go, go to sleep. No, nope, already dead. Okay. I'm done. They don't have a sham. I feel like my feet are chilly. And then, so, yeah, so they're all standing around and the, the, the son is crying, the son's girlfriend is sad, and the dad is all angry, and the EMT is looking at the drunk driver who's sitting in the back of his ambulance and saying, like, oh, I sure wish somebody would murder this guy who just killed that lady with the drunk driving. If only somebody would murder him, huh? Yeah. And the dad's like, yeah, I, get, I got that. He walks right up to the ambulance guy and he's like, uh, here's my badge. I'm a cop. I'll take it from here, ambulance guy. And I needed the ambulance guy to be like, nope, you can't <laughs> take the ambulance from here. What? No, yeah. you know, that's that's what cops do. They they show a badge and then they say, I'll take it from here. I, I just ran a Starbucks for a week and a half based on this. You tell me I can't do this. <laughs> well, and so I guess the idea is supposed to be that the ambulance guy is like, yeah, man, take him. Go ahead. Do whatever you want to do. But. I feel like that ambulance driver kind of had a different method of killing the guy in mind <laughs> because, <laughs> because immediately after that, we see him drive off. Then we cut to a newscaster going, a man was found dead in an ambulance after it drove off a cliff last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, okay. The newscaster, I think almost exact words were like, all right, we found a firebombed ambulance with a corpse in it back behind a warehouse. 
The police don't suspect foul play. Yes! What? Well, okay. He specifically says the ambulance went off a cliff and they haven't found the driver. But they don't expect Well, we don't foul suspect play. foul play. This look, this kind of thing just happens. Well, we don't we don't like to talk about it, but one out of eight ambulances drives itself off a cliff. It's something to do with the siren. we we don't know why. I just love the idea of him walking back to the ambulance guy saying, Hi, I took care of that. And he's like, Great, where's my ambulance? He's like, Oh, you wanted that back? Oh. What was I gonna do? Murder him not in the most obviously connected to you way possible. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing. <laughs> Just put in a, a lost ambulance request form. I know it'll take him a couple of days to get you a new one, but you just. <laughs> How did he do that? Did he dive out of the ambulance while it was going fast? He should be all scraped up. That's probably where he lost his toupee. <laughs> oh, that's the scene we're missing. That's the scene I want to... Is this guy just like struggling to push an ambulance off a cliff? Yeah, right, right. He's like, you know what? I'm going to uh, have to put a, a brick on this gas pedal probably. That'd do it, right? <laughs> I got to... Uh, okay, I'm going to put it in neutral and then I'm going to try pushing. <laughs> Uh, hold on, I got this. Remember in Roadhouse when he did the thing with the car? I need a knife. I'm throw a knife at the gas pedal from outside the car. Drunk. Through the gas pedal. Drunk driver die. Get out here and help me tip the ambulance. But then you climb in real fast when it looks like it's going to go, okay? All right, this oh, went badly. God. Now I have to find like a Dodge Caravan to get back to that ambulance guy. Oh, oh. That was so fucking stupid. I love it so much. All right. So now we cut to this other incredibly stupid scene, right? This is the one where Adam is driving along on his motorcycle and he, you know, the cop is trying to pull him over, but he's like, fuck the police. I'm, I mean, I'm going to pull over and everything, but you know, but fuck. <laughs> he's like, I don't stop for any man. Now let me just pull over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't have the kind of money we'd need for a chase scene. Okay. All right. I All right. Will. Well, then. Yes, I do pull over. <laughs> Yeah, the cop, the the girl's like, "Hey, you should pull over for that cop." He goes, "I'm not afraid to die." What? What? Okay, um, that's great to know. Thanks, guy. Uh, you should pull over. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, the only way that line makes sense is if Adam was originally supposed to be cast as a black guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so he pulls over, but he's being he's giving the cop shit. So the cop. Gets out of his fucking car and basically gives him the like, you know, obey me and, and be obsequious or I will shoot your girlfriend to <laughs> death ultimatum. Yeah. I mean, I know it's not on purpose, that, but this is the most realistic depiction of cops that we've seen in Christian <laughs> cinema. Congratulations. <laughs> We need to retrain the police force. No, not but not with hostage <laughs> stuff. I feel like escalating straight to hostage is weird. <laughs> And at some point, like, you know, the girl is like, Adam, oh, God, help me. And he goes, did you say God? That reminds me of an evil atheist monologue that I've been practicing. <laughs> but it's great because she's in imminent danger. She's like, oh, God. And he's like, there's no such thing as God. If I may quote Daniel Dennett and the cops like, hey, uh, in the middle of a hostage thing right now, you know, you know what? You're the hostage now. You're the worst. Yeah, so he the the cop hits her with his nightstick, and then he's like, "Oh wow, fuck, man! I didn't think you. Okay, fine, fine, cop me or something." Um, but just then the cop gets a call on his radio and and ends the scene, which means the that crime was a freebie. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> they exactly. have to leave. <laughs> you know what they say: two crimes at the same time. The second one's real. <laughs> yeah. You guys have a good night. <laughs> so. Yeah, that fucking scene wouldn't have been weirder if the cop had turned out to be looking for John Connor. So I think the audience at home might need a minute to recalibrate their expectations. So we're going to give them that minute, but we'll be back soon with even more Adam's Testament. Hi, I'm Tony D from Tony D's House of All the Other Sheets That Aren't My Sheets Rock. We've got scratchy sheets. I've got sweaty sheets. All the sheets that my sheets rock won't sell. Sure. My Sheets Rock has created the so-called regulator sheets, which are designed specifically to keep hot sleep as cool and cold sleep as comfortable. They regulate temperature, they wick moisture, they stay breathable and are so soft, you'll sleep comfortable every night. 
But why would you do that when you can come on down to Tony D's house of other sheets where everything is crammed into a plastic square so you can't feel how terrible they are? It's true. My Sheets Rock sent us some samples and they're so soft. They're the only sheets I use now. Wait, who are you? I'm Heath, one of the hosts of the shows. If you say so. Well, what if I don't believe you, Mr. My Sheets Rock? Don't believe me? Their five-star customer reviews speak for themselves. Plus, they offer a 90-day risk-free trial and free shipping and returns. Check out My Sheets Rock at MySheetsRock.com slash awful and enter code awful for 10% off and free shipping. That's MySheetsRock.com slash awful with the code awful. My Sheets Rock for when itchy and sticky isn't your thing. Hey, honey, sorry I'm late. Whatever, babe. I ate all the bread. I noticed you wore your underwear outside your clothes for our date. Yeah, well, I don't text my mom back. Yeah, I get it. Hey, hey, folks. I'm Tim. I'll be your server. Can I tell you about our specials? Uh, we're atheists. Nobody's special. Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not what that means. Um, so we have a veal picada. Picada religion. Totally. Wow. Okay. That was a terrible, terrible wordplay. Um, we, uh, we also have our homemade bolognese sauce. That can come on any of our pastas. Nothing? Okay. And of course, we have Angel's Food Cake. Psh, I hate Angel's Food Cake. Do you have any, like, Devil's Food Cake? Yeah, we'll have two of those. No, no, we, we, don't, we don't have that. Um, why don't I give you guys a minute and uh, you can... Whatever. I want fettuccine Alfredo, but instead of veggies, I want fries. I'm just going to eat his fries. Yeah, and just so you know, I don't believe in tipping. I don't believe in believing in tipping it either. Wow. All right. Well, you guys really are going to hell. Yeah, we are. My clothes are so itchy. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the story in flashback mode where clean cut blonde dating Adam. I love that one of the ways. So the various ways that we make him clean cut are like, you know, he doesn't have the goatee. He doesn't have the microphone tattoo microphone. and he's not dating a fucking redhead yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't have the leather jacket with like 18,000 bejazzled rivets on it. <laughs> yeah right exactly yeah. so yeah but the clean cut version of him 10 years ago is walking through the school and, and he's being tempted by the devil's sweet guitar skills <laughs> right yes. the devil has disguised himself as a substitute guitar teacher <laughs> <laughs> that looks like he would be like he would be out of place anywhere except for really digging his job at GameStop, right? <laughs> or being a substitute guitar. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, yep. that's yeah. true, actually. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, this was almost my best worst way. This was almost best worst obvious devil because he he walks in the room and he's like, mm -hmm. "Oh, have you been playing long?" And he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> "Right." <laughs> Just wanted Adam to be like, "Weird reaction to have you been playing." <laughs> long <laughs> and he's just gonna monologue at adam throughout this scene in devilese he gets about a sentence in before he says adam you see music is like science it's like math there's no god is what i'm saying <laughs> guitar have you ever heard of the golden ratio and and adam's <laughs> like yeah and he's like oh well then never mind i was gonna tell you but apparently you know <laughs> and this is when the devil names a bunch of great thinkers. Yes, yes. But like in an evil tone, which was hilarious. <laughs> so he's like, Plato, Fibonacci, Euclid is my favorite. My, fa my favorite evil subject is musical geometry. <laughs> yeah. So he hands the guitar, Satan hands the guitar over to Adam. Adam plays one chord, right? And and the devil's like, I see great potential in you. <laughs> this is also where we as the audience realize, oh, this actor does not know how to play the guitar well. Nope. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> blank. And then he just looks up with deer eyes and the guy's like, oh, that's that's what you're going to do. Yeah, great potential. <laughs> right. And uh, another thing that the whole movie doesn't know about guitars is... If it's an electric guitar, you, you don't get full sound unless it's plugged into a goddamn amp. Well, yep, yeah, that's <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Slight oversight here. 
So the devil's like, you've got potential. You you also don't need to plug it into an Apparently both of us get full sound out of that. But that was just a me thing. He also has this great moment where he's like, Adam, can I let you in on a secret? And he says boring devilly stuff, but I really wanted him to be like, I ate a bunch of mushrooms 45 minutes ago. I'm, I'm not really the guitar teacher. I'm just afraid to leave this room. <laughs> Will you walk me home? <laughs> so, but yeah, apparently that was his first introduction to the devil. So now we go back to Purgatory Alley, right? So dad is still looking for me. He decides to go back to the same alley to see if he's come back like he was a fucking cat that got out or something right <laughs> he goes back to the same alley now there was a homeless guy that was there before because every like every fourth christian movie has to have a homeless guy holding bible quotes on a piece of cardboard yep right that's all that's in alleys in christian movies <laughs> just, just exactly <laughs> full to bursting with apropos quote holding homeless people <laughs> exactly yeah and every character is never like, oh, you know what? I'm going to memorize this quote because this is clearly going to like <laughs> guide my quest here. Nope. If we ever find ourselves in a Christian movie, we'll know. Yeah. Yeah. So he gives the guy some money. He's like, hey, have you seen this? You know what? Never mind. You're a creepy homeless guy. <laughs> and then the the homeless guy says something back to him. I wrote in my notes. He says something in echoey Aramaic or something. It turns out. Yes, exactly. I was exactly correct. It was fucking Aramaic. <laughs> but yeah. But then he does say something in English, too. He's yeah. like, the boy you seek is not far away. Poof. And <laughs> and Joe turns around and he's like, okay, man, you want to be a little more specific about that? Oh, you vanished. Great. You, you Batman vanished. Great. disappeared. Great. Okay. Awesome Fucking advice. Right. Magical angel sent from heaven. Prophetic <laughs> homeless people are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> he might as well have been like, warmer. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so then Joseph calls his connections on the force and we get my favorite vanishing plot point of the entire goddamn movie, right? He's on a payphone. This movie was made in 2017. He's on a <laughs> payphone and he calls his old partner on the force and he says, hey, Frank, you remember that unsolved murder case with all the symbols on the wall and the stuff that's also part of this convoluted ass plot of ours? And, and Frank's like, yeah, I sure do. I bet this is going to come up again later in the movie. He's like, really, it's not. I'm just... Nope, not even. <laughs> You'd be amazed how none of this is going to come up later in the plot. Can you name all the details of that case? I can, but I, we're, we're just dropping this plot line. So you want to well, skip it? The greatest fucking thing about it is that Frank goes like, oh, yeah, that was the case where the victims had their eyes and their hearts ripped out. And then I'm like, well, then why didn't you just say... You remember that case where the victims had their eyes and their hearts ripped out? <laughs> yeah. I feel like you'd lead with that. Bit. It's weird that the wall writing is what stuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yeah, eyes ripped out, hearts ripped out. That's every day in the big city. I'm talking about the one where there was graffiti. Yeah, now yeah, that's exactly. the one. I'm talking about. Exactly. Property. The one it. with the black guy. Well, just the guy who ripped out the eyes and the hearts. It was, doesn't matter what race he <laughs> was. <laughs> <It's a shmishmer. laughs> Yeah, but but he's like, what language was that? Uh, symbols and stuff. He's like, that was Aramaic. And he's like, wow, that's so lazy that that was Noah's first guess, really. It was that's, <laughs> we're going Aramaic, huh? Interesting. Code in Aramaic. And you're, you're calling me about that. Is this related to anything or just like, apropos <laughs> nothing? He's like, no, 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 it's nothing. Just want to decode some Aramaic. I don't know. <laughs> like a Sudoku type situation for me. Really wanted him to do the awkward catch up thing where he's like, so how's Carol? <laughs> so she, she's good <laughs> good okay <laughs> i gotta go so now we cut to uh we cut to adam playing guitar back in the flat he's going back and forth between then and now right like back to all the walls are white time and modern time and again <laughs> how bad this actor is at guitar is impressive for a movie where they made this his thing this is like a movie starring me about jogging. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not mad. I'm impressed. I love that he's playing an acoustic guitar here too because I, th I feel like that means two things. The movie's decided that like acoustic, Christian, electric, <laughs> yep. yes. demonic. Devil, exactly. yeah. Obviously. But also somebody on the set was like, you can't keep using electric guitars not you plugged in. You're going to look like you're just having... <laughs> So, yeah, so Adam's walking to his gig or something, and he comes across the bum that had yelled Bible quotes at his dad, right? And he's there singing along with a guy who's playing a bugle. Oh, my well, God. 
I'm so <laughs> fucking angry about this. He's, he's. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? He's play. He's playing like Miles Davis's solo from Kind of Blue yeah. on a fucking bugle. On a bugle. <laughs> you can't play all those notes on a fucking bugle. It only has notes in the harmonic series of the key that the bugle's in. You would get oh. like C G C E G. You you could play taps and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> idiots. But that doesn't stop this actor from just furiously fondling every part of this instrument. <laughs> yes. He's tapping the bet. He turns it around and plays it from the wrong end at one point. It's fantastic. <laughs> All right, so and Adam gets into a fight with these guys, right? Because the singing guy, the the one guy that his dad had talked to earlier, has this little Bible quote on his piece of cardboard. So he has to yell at him about how atheist he is and how he doesn't believe in any of that Bible shit, right? <laughs> and hey, I just want to say, fuck you, homeless guy. I know how hard life really is. That's a hot take. <laughs> That's a hot take. <laughs> and the homeless guy is just like, all right, relax with the Daniel Dennett quotes that you're screaming at me. <laughs> We're strangers talking on the street. Right. Why are this we having This conversation a escalated Facebook crazy argument. fast. <laughs> and, and the guy, the homeless guy says, you know what I see in the world? And Adam says, what do you mean what you see? You're blind. That was the first time I realized that they were going for blind with this character. Oh. Well, yeah. He's like, you're... You're staring at me. You're blind. You're staring at me like the Mona Lisa and you're saying you're blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that that's why when the dad turned to him and said, you know, hey, have you seen this? Kid? Oh, never mind. Because he realized he's supposed to have realized he was blind. I don't know why the fuck they thought we were going to know they intended for that character to be blind. <laughs> and I just need to say at this point, blind guy ex machina definitely needs to make it onto the next version of the Christian movie bingo card. Oh, or at least homeless guy ex machina. Oh, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. All right. So meanwhile, we cut to the redhead, the girlfriend. She w wakes up awash in an ocean of animal prints. Oh, <laughs> and it's so good. we have to learn that she's bad. Right. So we get her mom calling her on her cell phone and she's like, my mom, fuck that bitch, right? <gasps> Not picking up her mom's phone call. Also, she is, um, she's still dressed in like a Halloween costume her mom wouldn't let her wear. Oh, yes. Okay, so this poor actress, everything they have her in is, it's just leather, everything. It makes no <laughs> sense. It's all like, no, but your character would probably only be wearing like like this short of a skirt, huh? <laughs> right? And the poor actress is so very clearly, wildly uncomfortable in the outfit, not just because it's a little more revealing than she's comfortable with, but also because it's like, you know, whatever, it's made of cow. Yeah, exactly. And she she's like ducking behind stuff casually as she acts. She just she's just lean into this house fern for a second. <laughs> yeah, and they have this bizarre fucking scene, right, where she's leaving the house and the devil shows up and he's just about to devil something or something, but then the angels show up dressed as cops. It's not and like they put the demons in chokeholds and then they vanish. And then the angels turn to her and they're like, sorry about those demons, ma'am. Have a nice day. And she's like, Psh, Philadelphia, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> this scene made so little sense. Did they talk in a different language in this yep. scene too? Yep, they okay. sure did. Yeah. <laughs> they did. I had no idea what happened. Yeah, they use some glowy hand light. One of the angels has glowy hand light that he can use. Yeah. And that'll never matter again. But anyway, so she walks away from that. And then the devil is sitting in the back of a limo. Oh, sorry. We couldn't afford a, a limo. He's sitting in the back of a sedan. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sensible town car. Not quite. He tries to do the slow, evil window roll down thing, but it's too fast. So he's like, oh, um, hi. I'm the devil. I want her to just be like, yeah, here's some great Poupon. Get the fuck out of here. You're being weird. <laughs> also, it's got the it's got the child safety window, so it only rolls like halfway down. <laughs> so he's trying to do the whole thing he's over. He's sticking his window. face out like a dog <laughs> trying to sniff while they're dropping by. One second. Let me let me open the door. Can you step back a little bit? No. I got no. I gotta push this button on the roof. I don't want you to get out. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, but he's pretending to be a music producer who's interested in Adam's Cord. 
Right. A music producer who's driving around looking for information from random people on the street. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, couldn't think of any other way to get close to this musician he was interested in signing. And then, okay, so just in case you weren't aware to this point in the movie, the extent to which this actor can neither sing nor play guitar. Oh. We're going to watch him sing and play guitar. <laughs> No, no, it's no. nowhere near as many notes Slow as Eli just the fake fuck sang. Down. <laughs> it is literally two notes, just it like is. ding, 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 ding. And it, apparently, these two notes have complex guitar fingers, and he's going <laughs> nuts on the fretboard. All the fucking over, for and, but not on the strings. Thing. Yeah, he's playing the top two strings. He's moving his fingers around on the other four. <laughs> oh, Count Dooku's there trying to copy him. <laughs> Dude, that's that's the beginning to Eye of the Tiger. It's just -na 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 -na. you can't. There's no fingerings to that. And the song, it's so he's so bad. They have him sing for like three minutes. He can't sing. It's so, I couldn't he's, stop laughing. This is what I was like. It's the Will Ferrell sketch. Yeah, by accident, they accidentally stumbled into the Will Ferrell sketch. Yeah. <laughs> he also like it's like he didn't have a song planned because they're like, yeah, just keep going. We'll use this as B roll. So he's like. Sing a song, <laughs> devil mute, mute, mute. I hate Mondays. <laughs> no hats. Yeah, we see his girlfriend staring at him like, why wouldn't they just find an actor that could play the fucking guitar? It's crazy. They made so much of this music about that. <laughs> so we also we see Frank going over the evidence. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, wait, who the fuck is Frank? Yeah, because we haven't introduced that character. Yeah, it's the guy who was on the phone and the movie forgot we didn't get to see him. Yes, right, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so hope you're keeping up. <laughs> so, okay, and this is such a useless fucking scene. I don't know why I, we're even talking about it, but we get to see where Frank, you know, he's been looking over all the old evidence and the Bible by the way. Sure. Right. In the montage. And he calls a different character that we've never met to get more information on a cold case that we know virtually nothing about and that the movie will not be about. No. And that the movie will never come back to. Nope. No. No, we're almost done with it after this scene. We have one more mention of it. But yeah, so he's calling archives to get some information but the devil is there pretending to be the guy from archives and telling him that information is unavailable. <laughs> so the devil, Satan, the prince of darkness. Yep, yep. Oh. In order to make this happen, he couldn't just, you know, get in the guy's head or catch a phone call using magic. He had to physically break into archives like <laughs> hours ago, maybe days ago, and just wait for this presumable phone call to happen and now he's faking the voice of the guy at archives he's, he's taking other calls uh cat uh, i'm actually waiting for another I've got an evil... <laughs> all right case three three one six two yeah Hold okay, on. i don't even know it doesn't Hold have this numeric this windows 95 I, <laughs> I got i gotta uh, reinstall do you have the cd <laughs> four it's four cds <laughs> and satan's henchmen here are my favorite because <laughs> All they do is stand behind him yeah, uh -huh. or stand in front of him in flanked formations. And they're doing that, but they're clearly so angry about getting forced to, like, stay all day for this for no reason, just to overhear a phone call <laughs> and apparently run to the archives to get those other calls. Well, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 For case three, three, one, four, three. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. And also the devil doesn't like he's wait, been waiting there all day for this fucking phone call. He can't make it all the way through the phone call without, like, tipping his hand. Right. Because at a certain point, he's just like, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just a guy from archives. Not at all. So I'm Satan. Fuck you, Frank. <laughs> what? Right. By the end of it. Yeah. He went to the uh, Omega Code 2 school of not revealing that you're the Antichrist. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oops. All right. So meanwhile, so dad goes to, to take some flowers to his wife's grave. Right. Yeah. And they didn't have uh, that, you know, fake grave money. So they just shoot another grave from the back. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So the dad is standing out there like at the at the wife's grave and Frank calls him. And he's like, hey, uh, I have some more information for you. And he's like, oh, where are you? He's like, I'm, I'm immediately next to you. We didn't 
We didn't want to bother doing two locations for this, so I am right <laughs> next to you. Hey, I'm over here. Oh, you're you're, you're visiting your dead wife. That kind of <laughs> kind of puts a bummer on my I'm right here prank. I'm I'm in a few, you you came to a cemetery to find me. You know that I'm in a cemetery. Have you seen Joe Biden? He was just wandering Did you around. Take my phone call while you were <laughs> where you're at your dead wife's grave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, oh, well, I got to go chat the, the Frank. But he turns to the tombstone. He says, don't worry, Dead White. The plot of the movie is still me finding Adam. I know there's a murder mystery thing now, but th th that's the plot. That's the plot. Don't worry. So he walks over to chat up Frank. Don't worry. I will forget about that two scenes from now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so this is actually the last we're ever going to fucking hear of this cold case, right? Because this is where Frank is like, that case was about a series of clubs that were owned by someone we couldn't figure out who it was, and they kidnapped <laughs> victims and killed them with demonic sacrifice, remember? And he's like, yeah, I called you about it. Why would you be telling me this? It makes no fucking sense. Well, I, I'm a local cop and also a, uh, you know, Aramaic cryptographer. <laughs> so I, I was trying to crack the code, too. I could not. I'm Philadelphia's leading uh, Aramaic cryptographer cop, actually. And then, oh. and then Joe is like, all right, I owe you big. And Frank's like, well, I mean, I just told you I, I didn't really help at all. Yeah. Don't, right. <laughs> don't try to improvise. But uh, yeah, OK, you owe me. <laughs> yeah. Well, so he tells he tells him that his son is involved. He's like, yeah, well, that case is opening back up. We're seeing clubs just like it again. And your son is involved somehow. Our undercover cops that are on this case have taken photographs of him. And he's like, that can't be true. And he's like, it is. Give me two hours and, and meet me again. Where? Not in any place in particular. Sh shut up. Sh hush. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> Just meet me in two hours. <laughs> if you ask where, you've thought it through more than the All fucking right. writers of the movie. So This is weird. Can I ask you something? Are we in a fucking metaphor? <laughs> <laughs> Our lives are inside of a really bad, vague metaphor. <laughs> All right, so the dad's leaving the uh, cemetery, but as he's walking away, he runs into <laughs> Father Callahan. Priest is right there. Because we need a priest in the movie, apparently. <laughs> yeah, <right>? absolutely. <laughs> and he's like, oh, hey, Father, that's that's convenient. I have an Aramaic question. <laughs> so, doing a code of some sort. Father Callahan's like, why don't I ever see you in church anymore? I wanted to be like the molestation, right? Oh, it's a like, uh, no. dead wife, problem evil. Oh, right. No, I was, I was figuring, you know, yeah, but, but like statistically speaking, we probably. Okay, okay. Rhetorical question. Rhetorical <laughs> question. Thank you. Got a good looking kid. Yeah, he says, um, he's like, so how's your son? He's like, oh, man, he's I mean, he's the whole fucking plot of this movie <laughs> and it's still act two. So very not good. You know, not... I think he might have been kidnapped by Satan with <laughs> evil guitar music. Right. But he's really fucking bad at guitar, so that it doesn't piece <laughs> together exactly. He's got a microphone tattooed on his neck, even though he can't <laughs> sing. It's <laughs> the whole thing. You'd think, you'd think they would ask him, "Hey, sing a little something before I put this on your neck." But no, they just. I think he <laughs> thinks the tattoo being physically near his vocal cords is somehow <laughs> positively influencing the sound. I don't. I don't think he understands the physics of anything about music. You play guitar without an amp. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> It's kind of creepy, but... <laughs> and I know it's just the bad writing in the scene, but was it just me or did it seem like the priest was trying to lose him as he goes into the monologue? He was like, <laughs> right, yes. Oh, not good, Father. And Father Callahan is just like, right, ah, I actually got to go to the bedroom. What? Here's the thing about <laughs> Satan and my son. Okay, well, uh, you know. Somebody <laughs> ducked around the corner and called me. <laughs> gotta, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> So, yeah, so he's like, all right, I'll tell you what. Uh, how about we pray for your son together, you and I? And he gives this crazy specific prayer, right? <laughs> Where he's like, Satan, you will have no power over Joseph or his son, and you can't use your minions to come between them or fuck with their girlfriends or pretend to produce their music. So we cut to Satan going, oh, God, God damn it, man. Come on. <laughs> we cut to Satan pouting just like, I heard what you said. <laughs> Say it to my face. But well, that was a sweet solo. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So then, but we follow the priest. We might as well, like, really flesh out this character. Sure. <laughs> so we cut to one of those Catholic rituals that they pretend aren't 
creepy as all fuck, but are. Okay, this happens <laughs> every time there's Catholic stuff in any of our movies. I have to Google it to see if it's supposed to be creepy, and it never <laughs> is. He takes a... Li live in a world where you're not familiar with this. There's a, a fucking silver lantern filled with plant matter just lying on an altar, and he, like, looks it over for a second, picks it up, and then just casually starts swinging it around as he walks away. <laughs> and he, one of my favorite little parts, that's a, a sensor, the mm. uh, little incense burner thing, and he spilled the incense like he dropped yes. the lid off the thing and yes. just kept going, which is excellent. Yeah, I mean, so come on, we don't have two takes kind of money. Yeah, so the, so the priest is, in, is there praying and shit out loud, the devil walks in smoking a cigarette. I feel like the whole point of Nick Mancuso taking this part was like, all right, but I'm smoking a cigarette in the fucking church, though. <laughs> Jed Bartlett. So he comes in and he starts fucking with the priest. Now, this actor has decided that during the course of his performance, he is going to try out every voice he has ever done in his life. <laughs> He's on to Smeagol now. He's doing them alphabetically. We're at the S's. So he starts fucking with his priest and like slowly turning into Smeagol voice as he does for no fucking reason. <laughs> and the priest is praying to God at this point, And this is happening. And basically, he's just like, all right, so gentle Jesus, help me. I'm getting attacked by Satan. OK, now Satan's like talking really close to my face, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> Jesus will help. Will help. Nothing. Great. So fucking the the, the uh, blind homeless guy, blind guy ex machina shows up. They give up on him being blind from this point out in the movie. Yeah. So he shows up to help out and he's like, you know, whatever, shit talking the devil for the remainder of the scene. Yep. And this is also where he claims that the high ringing sound you hear in your ears at night is actually Jesus whistling at you. That's tinnitus. Yeah, as if it wasn't, as if the miking in this movie and the use of the fucking bugle to play 88 goddamn different notes wasn't enough. <laughs> we now learn that the person who made this movie thinks that tinnitus is Jesus whistling at him. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Their understanding of audio cannot get worse. No. I think he might be a firefighter prophet, too. <laughs> he just knows where the fires are. <laughs> There's also one thing that I just, I love. Satan at one point, he's monologuing at Michael, right? And he's he says, you hypocrite, you hypocrite. But he, for whatever reason, Nick Mancuso's performance, he's like, you hamburger, you hamburger. <laughs> it's like he, okay? I wrote hypocrite three times with my eyes closed, and that's what Nick Mancuso <laughs> had to deliver. <laughs> Oh, I love all the various characters he's trying on before this is over. And then, so, yeah, so Satan's like, but I want to take this guy's soul. And then the angel, who turns out later, we find out he's the angel Michael. He's our, our, our archangel. His eyes turn blue like he's a fucking Freeman and Arrakis, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that preview looks so goddamn good. And then, so Satan's like, he's like, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to kick your ass. But then 88 key bugle guy shows up and the devil's like, oh, he's the one with the glowy hands. Fuck. He was, fuck. He was lying on one of the pews. <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Hello. Did someone call for a bugle? He's like, oh, dude, dude, dude. I'm going to sit up bugle first when I do it. I'm going <laughs> to sit bugle. He's going to see the bugle and then I'll sit up. Like, Is that a floating bugle? No, it's a guy. <laughs> Uh, and we they they even zoom in on the bugle and his hands <laughs> pressing non-existent <laughs> valves on a bugle. <laughs> Why do that? All right, so now we cut to dad at a bar. Now apparently this is where he was supposed to meet Frank. The movie didn't bother to tell us that or anything. Right? Oh. This is where we meet Swinger Club Peter Laurie, the bartender. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> this actor and Joe walks in, <laughs> sees this guy at the bar, the bartender. What'd you call him? Peter Laurie what? Swinger Club Peter Laurie. Sweet. Okay. All right. Got it. And he's like, hello, I'm going to sit at your restaurant uh, couch that you apparently have <laughs> and make a phone call and not order anything. But then he orders something. What the fuck was he drinking? He was like binge drinking. <laughs> he appears to have drunk four 
decorative candles? <laughs> so he walked in there. He's like, I juice on the rocks. Keep them coming. I don't know. And they show us a little montage of that. Yeah. Yeah. But so while he's waiting, he, he can't get in touch with Frank. So this demon girl shows up to seduce him. And we have we have this. And this should probably be a Christian movie. Bingo Square as well, where he's um they're flirting, so the movie dro drops into a soundless montage because the writers don't know how flirting works <laughs> or what it would sound like. There's laughter. I know there's laughter. <laughs> I've seen them do it from a distance. The end. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, yeah, so he fucks the succubus, and then, like, we cut to, like, immediately after the devil's fucking with him for fucking the succubus. Well, I thought that was happening, like, in the middle of it. Like the, the way they presented oh, it, it seemed okay. like they were fucking and the devil was like roasting him during the sex <laughs> with the succubus, which by the way, that would not work out. Like if Satan thinks being roasted during sex with a demon is going to ruin my sexual performance, he yeah. does not know me at all. <laughs> Joke's on him. Yeah. By the way, one of the lines from this little mini roast, I just had to write it down because it's so brilliant. Because you couldn't protect her because you're weak. <laughs> Oh, it was, it was the double because I just needed the double because to be written down <laughs> in the historical record. And then then he's moodily afterwards, he's moodily staring in the mirror and he breaks it in rage, except he wasn't allowed to break the mirror. So, <laughs> well, clearly because he hurt himself on the first take. And they're yeah. Like, yeah, give it a little punch. I don't know. Definitely hurt himself. Yeah. Oh, so we so we see the mirror. It cuts away. He kitty scratches in the mirror's direction <laughs> and then we see like uncle mark tapping the center of the mirror with a hammer and being like okay okay oh. and i love these like he's doing that thing where you're like staring at the mirror being like stupid you joseph idiot fucking you fuck suck you was the wrong way and now you got you got roasted by satan you didn't have anything funny back <laughs> <laughs> I wanted her to walk in and be like, hey, baby, nice work in there. Yeah. You yelling at the mirror? You hurt your yourself? knuckle there? It looks like you hurt your knuckle. <laughs> but yeah, but he decides he's going to kill himself because he's so ashamed of his succubus fucking. So he goes out onto this balcony and just as he's about to kill himself, Michael, the homeless angel, shows up, full blown Freeman eyes at this point, and he's like, Oh, good. I didn't want to jump up anyway. Thanks for the excuse. Yeah. And he's like, Yeah, no, you still got to go find your son. He's like, Right. The whole plot of the fucking, the whole fucking oh, movie. Shit, right? right. Finding my son. <laughs> Do we ever deal with that murder thing? You know what? I mean? <laughs> yeah. Hey, also, just quick thing is, um, is that uh, demon lady still in the other room? Did she leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's still there. I feel like we're getting off track. Don't kill yourself <laughs> is why I'm here. All right. Well, now that we've gone way out of our way to point out that the main character of this movie did too have sex with a lady, I guess we can pause for a quick break. But first, let me give back to you the hard sell. Will Frank be able to crack the 20-year-old cold case? Will Joseph's dark past come back to haunt him? Will Lucifer fool Adam into thinking he's a music producer? No, no, there will never be any reason why any of those plot points were introduced. But stick around anyway for the mostly unrelated conclusion of Adam's Testament. Adam, come with me, Lucifer. Don't do it, Adam. Stay with the angels. Hmm. I don't know. This is tough. Hey, Adam, I'll tell you what. How about 50% off almost any one item at adamandeve.com? Ooh, 50% off? Don't listen to him, Adam. Why not, though? That's a that's a great deal. Because anyone can get 50% off almost any one item at adamandeve.com and use the code AWFUL at checkout. Wait, is that true? Uh, yeah. And when you do, you'll also get 10 free boredom-busting gifts, including six spicy movies, a three-piece bonus kit, and best of all, free shipping delivered discreetly right to your door. So I don't need to sell my soul at all? You sure don't. Just go to adamandeve.com and use the offer code AWFUL. Curse you, Michael, and your reasonably priced adult toys. Hey, don't blame me. Blame adamandeve.com. All right, Adam, how about this? Yogurt card, three stamps. Meh. Nah. Curse you, yogurt card. Okay, y you curse stuff a lot. He's right, you do. Yo. Hey, minions, come to me. Yes, Lord Satan. Yes, Lord Satan. Lanolin, the seductress. I have a mission for you. 
Anything, Dark Lord, anything. So Joseph is supposed to meet his detective friend tonight. And that information might ruin our plans, so I want you to distract him. Uh, Joseph? The, the, the cop guy? Looking for his son? Yes, the very same. Ooh, yeah, um... What? What's uh, ooh? Uh, it, it, it's just... I mean... Come on. What? Really? What, what do you mean, come on? Uh, he... He looks like a rejected cartoon of Mussolini. That's like true, bad Lord. He, he looks like a Jewish woodpecker, kind of. I, 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 okay, I, I, I understand that, but you are a succubus. This is your job. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I want to see if there's some other options. Maybe we could explore something uh, else. Oh, you want other options? Okay, how about this? Mm -hmm. You seduce him, or you can spend the next million years tending the boiling shit pits. Um, okay... Boiling shit pits. Oh, boiling shit pits every time. That's easy, I think. You guys are the worst. <laughs> the weird looking dude. All right, I'll fuck him once. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit when we last left our hero. An archangel had convinced him not to kill himself. And we're going to rejoin them showing up at Club Purgatory to redeem Adam once and for all. But first, to do so, they have to get past a series of Heavily accented demons, beginning with the bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bouncer has the, like, black eyes thing. And he's like, mm -hmm. holy fuck, the bouncer doesn't have eyes. And Michael's like, hey, I'm going to need you to be cool. This is literally <laughs> the front door. There's a lot of... <laughs> have you not figured out this is a demon hell? Come on, dude. <laughs> Look, we're going to deal with a lot of Fremen. You're just going to have to get used to the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he does the password. And I wanted so badly for him to have the wrong password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy just be like, nope, you entered a, a password from three years ago. Uh, tell me oh. which, which of these squares has a traffic light in it. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, no, just Michael trying to do that thing where you like tip a bouncer five dollars. Hey, man, high five. <laughs> Is this four dollars and ones? Four. Did you just drop it? The high five is a stupid way to do this. We'd have to like pinch it and then slowly bring our hands down like Romeo and Rosalind. So yeah, but he gets in though. He's got the right password. He's he's like Henry Hill in Goodfellas. He doesn't have to fucking wait around. We we, we actually we watch him walk in and then we see a, a line of people. The the camera pans down to, to, as if to say, see, he's an archangel. He's he's important. <laughs> So he goes into the club. The fucking music in the background is so goddamn ridiculous. Oh. It's like a 15-year-old goth dude is trying to fuck me. I loved it so <laughs> much. I so wanted to hear their entire attempt at a techno song. It's just a sinful nature. Beep, boop, beep, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Computers, helmets. So they go through the club. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We're going to do the whole song. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So they go through the club all the way to the back where the fucking cask of Amontillado basement is apparently, is right? <laughs> okay. This is the best, like, fuck, we don't have a scene. Oh, yeah. set for this. Scene. It's just a chair. And he's like, hello, some femme fuel. We meet at last in your <laughs> chair in the corner where you always sit. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Are you like the uh, key maker or what's going on? Guys, like, oh, really? Because I'm Asian? Real classy. Real clip. But yes, I am the key maker. That's on the point, though. <laughs> so I'm disguised as the bathroom attendant. Yeah, just, yeah so... <laughs> Let me. It's it's going to be difficult for us to communicate to the audience at home just how nothing happens in this fucking scene. But yeah, they walk into this basement. There's an Asian guy sitting in a chair, and he's like, "Oh, ha ha! I thought you might come. My brother Azazel has been awaiting you." And then another character comes up. They stand there and talk shit for a second, and then Archangel Michael says, "Now go and be banished," and they're banished. And let me just say my sympathies for the actor who plays Azazel. This poor man could be so hot if it weren't for his face. He just he absolutely got destroyed in the face. Like, he's got rippling abs. He's wearing this leather vest with these sweet pecs. And then the camera pans up and he ah, he just looks like an anti-Semitic World War II cartoon of Adam Driver. It's wrong. <laughs> He looks like Adam Driver's Purim-based stuntman. It's not good. So it's not good. 
And this is Azazel with mm-hmm. the leather vest. Mm-hmm. And he presents Michael, the angel, and Joseph yes. and, Ad- and Adam with a deal. Yes. Well, he, he says, <laughs> all right, let's make a deal. We here in hell get Joseph and Adam. And they were like, oh, that's you're it, done? That's, that's, it. Not, <laughs> that's not a deal. No. You that's, just named the two stuff. things that <laughs> do, you do, get. We Do we get to end the scene for this? But yeah. <laughs> also, Blood Sugar Sex Magic was overrated. That's a, you're a <laughs> shitty band. But yeah, so but they, they offer the trade and they talk a bunch of shit. And then Michael is like, I banished thee. And they're like, oh, fuck, I forgot. He had the banishing powers. Damn it. We should have been nicer. <laughs> hey, man, you can just like turn demons into a flash of light and kill them. You want yeah. to just like stick with that as like the entire just go right to that. <laughs> <laughs> was all the monologuing necessary? <laughs> and then it's just a tiny moment, but at the end of the scene, right, for some reason they don't cut after he explodes them, so he's like, here, just step around the chair, step around the chair, the next scene is <laughs> past the chair. <laughs> all right, so yeah, so they get past these guys, apparently, these gatekeepers, and, and they, they go into Satan's dining room where he's <laughs> having a lovely meal with Adam and the girl, the redhead. <laughs> so good. And Satan's like, welcome boys. I must assume you've, you've done the light flashy kill move. <laughs> um, they're like, yep, uh, light flashy kill move. Turns out he has that. <laughs> yeah. and Satan's like, okay, well don't do, do it again right away. I would like to banter with you now for right. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. We need some more evil banter. It's better. He explains that that Michael banished them to the desert for seven generations. And yes. I really want to follow the story of those demons. <laughs> and another thing, Michael. Ah, oh, fuck. What the what the hell happened? Uh, he, he banished us to the desert for seven generations. What? He can do that? Yeah. Yeah, he can do well, that. Damn it. That sucks. You're telling me. At least you're not wearing a leather vest. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're going to burn that way, like, permanently. Right? I am. And then she said, well, I don't know if I want to date right now or just see each other. Okay, but what what does that mean? Right, exactly. Okay, I'm thinking of a thing. Is it sand? It, yeah. 343,231 bottles of beer on the wall. 343,231 bottles of beer. Nice, we're back. Wow. That was fast, right? Yeah, well, you know, it's an abstinence-only state. Ah, got it. You want to get tacos? Hell yeah, I want to get tacos. Oh, such a better movie. Such a better better. movie. Much better. Yeah. So, yeah, but dad is trying to talk Adam into giving up his Satan-y ways, right? He's like, Adam, don't you remember how white the walls were during the flashbacks? (laughs) He's like, I don't care anymore. I want to be devilly. He accidentally (laughs) quotes the Mark thing. He's like, no, son, you can do anything. You can walk on serpents and scorpions. Please don't actually try to do either of those. There's a bunch of people who die. (laughs) Also, by the way, that waitress girl who never gets a name, I'm pretty sure, in the entire movie. She does. She gets a name in the next scene. <laughs> oh, not oh, okay. Here at the end of Act 3. Cool. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so at the moment, waitress girl, until they figure her out later, she's just so mad about the dinner date she was having with Adam ending up at Satan's lair here. She's just like, ugh. Come on. Yeah, really? <laughs> they, they cut over to her and I, I read that expression as her thinking, what the fuck am I doing in this movie? What purpose does my character <laughs> serve? My name's Mary, by the way. There it is. <laughs> it's Katja. <laughs> Katja is the name they went with. Anyway, so yeah, so Michael's and, and Satan talk shit for a little while and Satan's like, but I have my minions. And he's like, yeah, no, I brought fucking Gabriel and Donatello the Bugle guy. I don't know whoever this guy is. And also other guy. Yeah. Who doesn't have a dumb power. He yeah. Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't have a, a an associated instrument, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted him to have like a recorder. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a kazoo. <laughs> he starts playing the recorder and a piano sound yeah. comes out. Yeah. 
All right, so yeah, so Satan's like, oh, you brought your friends, huh? Well, why don't I use my Satan powers on Redhead Girl and make her, like, you know, writhe? <laughs> like, really? Do we have to? Do we have to go with writhe? Do we have to? Oh, yeah. it, that, which is exactly what that actress says because she does not writhe. She like, <laughs> she's like writhe, writhe, writhe. Right. Okay, right. Okay. okay, great. But, and, <laughs> but then the good guys with the special angel helpers are like, they have a song for that. Yeah. They're like, stop turning the girl into a demon. <laughs> Chant. And that's, that's the end of that. Well, yeah, they, they do a prayer and then they close on the big power clap finishing move. <laughs> it's the, it's the, um, the Lord's Prayer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right, the, the, they they try to do the deliver us from evil passage thing, mm. but Michael gets the passage wrong, yes! and he's behind by like half a beat it's from the, the unison of everybody else. I could not stop laughing. <laughs> and to be fair, I react the same way Satan does when I hear the Lord's Prayer, so I get it. I get this. Yeah, movie. right. No, they, if somebody all comes in and starts doing the Lord's Prayer in unison and then claps at me, I freeze frame for a couple of seconds. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt. No doubt. Did you go into the Boy Scout? Sweet <laughs> over right there. What happened? So, yeah, so they, they force the devil and his minions into a temporary freeze frame while they run off. They grab their kids and run. They get into their escape minivan. Yes! Oh, it's perfect silly. I, I, all it needed was for the angel to be like, don't touch the handle. It's an automatic door open. Beep. No, now it's gonna close. Don't touch See, it. You just made it Step take back. longer. You, back. it's gonna take longer now. No, just pull. You just have to pull the one thing. The whole seat comes forward. You don't just, have to lean it. Don't. They just reenact every time I've ever gotten to do, do an Uber XL. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so now they turn to the back. They get. They get into the escape minivan. They turn to the back and they go, Adam. Katya, are you okay? I'm like, oh, she has a name now. Wow, Look crazy. At there you go. Oh, she got it. And they're great. like, yeah, we're fine. We were having a great dinner with Satan until you showed up and started chanting prayers and shooting lights and shit everywhere, you assholes. <laughs> well, they ask Adam and Katya, hey, do you guys remember anything from the nightclub? And they're like, yeah, we do. When Satan, the prince of darkness, had a magical fight with these angels here, uh, we do remember that. We do. It literally just happened. <laughs> 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 so yeah so they all go to the police station for reasons that are never explained now when they get there Katya's family is there right they're all crying like apparently she was a runaway or something they don't explain this I'm, I'm guessing on all of this right all no we see is idea. her family's at the police department waiting for her she walks into their arms and they leave right come on honey we'll get you to a better movie Let's get you in a sweater, huh? Let's get a sweater on you. Would you like to not be wearing a leather bra from it? Yeah, she wants to not yeah. wear a leather bra. All right. So, yeah, so she leaves. She's done being in the movie. Lucky her. And, and Joseph takes his son, takes Adam into the police station. Now, he does that, and then just as he leaves, Satan shows up in a Porsche because they had Porsche money, apparently. Oh. Uh. <laughs> And Angel Michael's standing out there. He's like, oh, shit. Is that the chili peppers I hear? Yeah. Satan growing <laughs> up. Great. I'll wait out here and have a uh, little staring contest with Satan for like three seconds. Yeah. I figure that'll give you enough time to. Yeah. I don't know what's happening now. Nope. Actually, I'm an angel and I don't know. You're going in the police station. As if that's it. any of us knew what was going on before this. Right. So, yeah. So, so dad takes Adam into an interrogation room to have a father son talk. <laughs> I'm. Is the dad a cop? <laughs> What? What is happening at this point in the movie? Nobody has any idea. <laughs> <laughs> so presumably Michael the Angel was like, uh, I guess go in the interrogation room and talk yeah. to each other. And they get they get in there <laughs> and it's a great moment. Adam and, and Dad Joseph are like, All right, well, we're in the interrogation room. You know what? I'm gonna go on this side. And <laughs> why are you on that side? What what's even happening right now? Why what are we doing here? Yeah, it, 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 and the movie doesn't bother to ever let any of us in on it, right? So they just start having a dad son fight about all the various unresolved elements of the story. 
Yeah. Right? Like, he's just like, you're a drunk, Dad. He's like, oh, right. Yeah, it's Act 3. We have not resolved that at all, have we? <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. This movie will not resolve why they're here. They will get out of it the way I get out of a citation needed sketch. Because yeah. <laughs> they're killing the character. They will kill. <laughs> they, they will. will kill one of yes, the they will. Yes. Out of this. <laughs> So, but yeah, but first they have to have this big, long, whiny talk about dead mom atheism and and how and 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 how uh, prayer is useless and all of that shit. Yeah, Dad's like, look, I've done a lot of bad things. I killed a guy earlier in the movie. Never really addressed that, but you know, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, jingly keys. Am I right? Huh? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and Adam's like, motherfucker, I was a good Christian for years, and I didn't even get an immortal mother out of it. So fuck God, fuck (laughs) his bullshit. And Dad's like, look, man, I got the movie's almost over. There's a lot of credits here. I got to give the Bible the hard sell, okay? You remember (laughs) that guy that I killed in in the ambulance? I do remember that, yeah. Just wanted to bring that up, because otherwise... Otherwise, we would not bring that up again. I just wanted to throw. I just wanted to throw out that that was a part of the movie that we've since abandoned. Cool. Anyway, noted. You're a good guy. <laughs> and then Satan shows up, but <laughs> not in the interrogation room. He shows up in the, like one way mirror thing. Yeah, but mm-hmm. but they forgot about that, so we can see him right there. <laughs> and Angel Michael's just like, oh man, all right, Satan's here. Uh, I have to let him argue with you from that other side room. Yeah, it's the- now. It's the rules. (laughs) (laughs) Satan starts harassing them. And I wanted them to be like, "Uh, dude, you got to press the button. We we can't. (laughs) Were you talking that whole time? But it it tells him dead mom was a whore, right? He's like, "Uh, uh sorry, hate to interrupt you from heart to heart. Your wife was a whore. That's right. (laughs) Go whore. Big old whore. (laughs) And then that was it. That's all I had. She's actually a Republican. If you want to see her again, you're coming (laughs) with me to hell. (laughs) And then... Dad has a heart attack and dies. <laughs> because this movie gets out of its plot problems the same way I get out of citation needed sketches. Yeah. No, so yeah. So we, we know it's a heart attack, by the way, because dad grabs his heart. Yep. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and he, he turns to his son as he's dying. He goes, Adam, I need you to spend the rest of your life trying to please my ridiculous religious beliefs or I'll have died for nothing. And then he's and then he dies, right? Yeah. And then Michael walks in and Adam turns to him and he's like, Hey, fuck me for asking, but like, what happened in this movie, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what was any of this about? Cut. <laughs> all right, so da- now we, we cut to dad's funeral, and Adam is all clean shaven again, which means he's Christian, and apparently he's also guitar guy at the Funeral? Yeah. And by the, the way, we get a panning shot of this funeral. Every human at this funeral looks like the factory second version of a human. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> not quite. God, and he's playing his stupid fucking guitar at this thing. I wanted it so bad for his techno band to be like playing the funeral. <laughs> like they, he gets through a little acoustic part and then it's like, bow, 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 bow. you know, they come in. No. But he, yeah, he's an acoustic Christian now. Yep. Yeah, he, exactly. He, he goes through this big long guitar thing. <laughs> you can see everybody at the funeral be like, "Oh, you're done. You didn't you didn't write any lyrics." It was just a, <laughs> it's weird just that, that you would have gone through and did thing. that whole bridge twice. That, that was a nice that little show. tune. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I mean, playing a guitar that like making everyone at the funeral listen to you play it. That's weird funeral behavior, isn't it? I just absolutely okay. Good. Glad to hear it. Satan's about to show up and talk smack, and he is definitely the second rudest person at this funeral. <laughs> yeah, right. So, okay, so the funeral ends. Adam's walking off. Satan shows up, and he's like, hey, uh, what's up? I, I'm. We haven't, I haven't really resolved anything in this movie just because we killed off a character. I guess we still have to finish it, right? Uh, are we cool? Are we cool? <laughs> I just... <laughs> I feel like we left things on a weird place. I killed your dad at the police station. Do you still want to work together? Because I like that chord you played. I still do like well, that. So that's the fucked up thing about it. The, the movie has never established to us that Adam has no memory of the fact that he was hanging out with Satan earlier. Right. So this guy walks up and he's like, don't I know you? And I'm like, 
Yeah, man. Remember your dad came in and prayed and flashy lighted this dude. But no, apparently he has no, it, it. That was like a dream sequence of some sort. Who the fuck? I guess. Is? Yeah. Neither of the characters seem sure because Satan's like, no, do you? I <laughs> he's like, do, <laughs> do we I? know and each other? Like, I don't. I wanted them to start paging through the script. No, because it says right here that you don't remember. <laughs> no, but then, but then you saw me inside the interrogation room kill your oh, dad. Right. Oh, so right. That's... Yeah, no, that wouldn't make it easy. And then the angel Michael came in, so you definitely know him. <laughs> but oh, yeah, this so... movie's bad. <laughs> so the kid wanders off, doesn't take the devil's temptation. So the devil turns to leave, right? We think the movie's over, but no. Dad's there, and he's leveled up, apparently. Now he's Joseph the White. Right, <laughs> yeah. and and this and Satan's like, oh, I can take the two of you, but the other angels are also there, cleverly disguised as statues. <laughs> and I love the one guy was like a baby angel, and so as he turns human, he's like, it's weird that they made me be a baby angel. I didn't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they they talk shit to Satan. They they like back him up to where he falls into a grave. And then there's fire tubes and shit. Yep. And then they wrap everything up, right? And we see the dad's reunited with dead mom. So it, it's a happy story. And just final touch, because this is the end of the movie and it will absolutely not matter. But it pans over and there's an old guy. And the old guy goes, why are my children fighting? Yeah. When will my children ever learn? Yeah. Uh, Which I think, is that supposed to be God? That's God. Yes. Because. That then the, is God. Th then the answer is, this is your thing, dude. Just boop. No more hell. Like, <laughs> everybody can fuck Jerry Falwell's wife. Like, that's on you, bunny. <laughs> yep. That was supposed to be God. What, asking himself why he was such a fuck up. And then, by the way, so we end on this nauseating drone shot, right? Like, the, do we see this drone shot <laughs> lifting so up? so good. Oh, God. So the guy was clearly just winging it. He'd never operated one of these before. They couldn't use more than one consecutive second of footage at a time. So it keeps fading out every second or so to new footage. Oh, yeah. yeah vomited three times in the closing eight seconds of this film, which is two more than normal. So like this yeah. is particularly bad. That's honestly, that's probably how we should like instead of having like, you know, writing a movie one to five stars. This was three vomits. Three movie. vomits out of five. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So, well, that's going to do it for our review of Adam's Testament. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to make a prediction for next week. So, Eli, tell us, what are you pretty sure is on deck? Well, Noah, Heath, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but our hate mail is getting a little thin. You ever notice that? So, we'll be taking on the men's rights documentary, The Red Pill. Oh, lucky us. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 265 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Data, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. And if you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rodney Slotnick of People Traps on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The devil went down to Georgia and died of COVID. Yeah, no, he's old. <laughs> the guys who were supposed to be driving that ambulance very obviously got caught and went to jail for murder. <laughs> if the actress who played Katya is listening, if you click on the upper right-hand corner of your IMDb page, you can take movies off. <laughs> <laughs>
Two. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the things that like the cheerleaders have? Yes, exactly. Those. Yeah, I think the word's tube. Thus, that's why the joke died. I, yeah, I don't know if there's a, word, a term for that. Yeah. All, All right, right, Noah. Thanks for editing this. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.